Welcome to a, another repair video. In this uh, video we're going to be talking about this ABS unit um, commonly found in VW and Audi uh, motors. And what we're going to do is go through how we can strip this down to have a look at the solder on the actual board and see if it corroded. Um, because um, you do need some special tools to be able to get that board out. The numbers on the uh, unit, as you can see, here's the numbers that are actually on it. We start by taking off these four Torx screws. And we have to separate this then from the metal housing. It might be stuck, there is a gasket. Okay. This here is your electronic unit here with your solenoids. This is the electrical part of the solenoid with the coil. And here is your actual valve. It all remains back in the uh, unit. This here is your pressure sensor. That's retained in the mechanical section, the uh, pump section of the uh, uh, ABS unit. Let's see, can we get a closer shot? Here we have the solder joints that we have to remove to get this board plastic housing. And it is double sided uh, print, which means it's soldered through the hole and onto the far side. So a standard solder iron is never going to unsolder this. You need some way of soaking that solder out when it's molten. And what I use is this uh, tool here. It's a SC-7000Z. It's fairly good for removing uh, double-sided print solder. Uh, it has come down in price quite a amount uh, uh, recently. And I got it set up to suck. And the solder, the, the iron tip gets hot. Okay, let's start. First, let's take this little strip here off. See will it come off without tearing. Don't forget to pull it back on at that spot. It does dissipate heat. It is for uh, dissipating heat. Uh, evenly across the board. Now, I'm just going to get you a close-up shot of that pin that I've just taken out. Let's see what the camera saw, uh, focus on it. As you can see now, I'm pushing that now, that pin is desoldered from the print. I'll carry on with the rest of them. <coughs> you might want to freshen up the solder with fresh solder. This looks like it has been out already. <coughs> and I think what they've done when they had this out, they left a uh, solder joint unsoldered. I'm not too sure but I think that might happen. <coughs> and what I do then is I make sure that they're all desoldered by moving it with the screwdriver if it doesn't shake back and forth, you know it's not desoldered. Okay, get them all done. Go to the next row. I have my iron set to about 420 uh, degrees centigrade. No 
don't leave your iron on it too long because that will destroy the print. connector now let's check all our connections make sure they're all desoldered That's all the connections disordered, but we've got two mechanical um, earth straps here. Um, what would you call them? They give strength to the connector, but they're also used as a ground. So these are a little bit harder to take out. Let's give them a little bit more heat. Come up very well. I'll just check my iron, make sure it's not blocked. Okay. This side here is okay, but this didn't seem to uh, unsolder correctly. What you have to really do is, uh, if that happens, if the solder hasn't totally come off, uh, you have to put solder back on to remove it. If there's not enough solder, they get a good thermal contact between the iron and the uh, solder. Um, the heat doesn't flow from the iron into the solder to be able to melt it. So, I'm going to just use my garden use near the solder line I can still use this here for this is uh, it's not uh, large fine okay I'm going to give this another try again I'll try and heat up the place first the spot that I'm trying to unsolder give a few dabs I'm not keeping the iron in the one place too long well, it does bring up the temperature of the area that I'm unsoldering. <coughs> came out successfully. Try again. <coughs> it's okay. Finally. Check them uh, to make sure they are desoldered correctly. Yep. Okay. Let's give it a try. See when the board lift out of the. Uh, That's our uh, PCB, our the uh, case. Of. Just going to have a look now and see is there anything amiss of this. You can see clearly on this side. This is the back end of the board. You can see that it's soldered on this side as well. I'm just going to have a close look at this board now with a magnifier and see can I see anything wrong. I could see no problems with the solder with just a quick inspection. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these um, solenoid packs. 
the actual uh, letter connections off this and it's the same thing a double sided print and you need to be able to uh, suck that solder out of it with a good solder now <coughs> these are larger pins so it'll take a little bit more heat to uh, remove the solder <coughs> I've got two pins of one of the uh, coils that didn't unsolder. That's them. And now we have our connection then here for your pressure switch. This is rather awkward. Because it's a flat pin, it's not a round pin. in here Let's have a look now and see what has um, freed up on it. That one there doesn't look like it's that freeing up. So let's just see can we. These two are not freed up. There's one here not freed up. Okay. Maybe just a might be just a little bit of solder in it. Which connections are unsoldered. This one here, what I'm going to do is try again. What I'm doing is I'm pressing down on this now. Open that. That's it. 
So the last two connections left. And because the pin was so large in the hole, I couldn't get the solid heat. So there's only one pin now holding. I can use my iron now that just encourage it to let go. Now Make sure it's coming up nicely. Okay. That's our solenoid pack. Push that aside. Um, we can check uh, continuity when we're here and uh, all these uh, uh, coils as well. You can do that, make sure none of them are open circuit because like it's the fault code is telling me there's an open circuit solenoid valve and I don't know which one it is. So I'm gonna do, just double check make make sure that all these solenoids are okay first. That's reading six ohms. Six ohms. Five point eight ohms. 5.8 go over here then 5.9 Draw in the range of 5.8 to, uh, to, uh, to 6 ohms So there, okay that um, Coil pack is okay I'm going to have a closer examination now of this bottom end of it now to see what I can see, see you can, uh, There has been work done on this, I can see solder work after being done on it Maybe someone has uh, breached a, a solder joint or something. I'll get back to you. Okay, I looked at all my uh, board. I've checked for poor solder joints um, on both sides of the board. And um, I went over with my uh, pyro pen and uh, I used liquid flux on the board and I reflowed the solder and all the chips and all the components and then cleaned it up with uh, some alcohol I uh, got rid of the flux with the alcohol and the only thing I found was a couple of pins on this this IC here this IC here that looked poorly soldered and it might have been a sliver of solder gone across it and also there was one resistor if I can find it uh, I'm not too sure which one it was but there was one resistor that was dislodged off its track um, maybe when it, uh, it, the uh, board was sh shook when the solder was still molten. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, coil pack back on. This coil pack back on to it. Um, coil pack, when I say coil pack, I don't, I don't mean the ignition coil pack. These are all coils, um, solenoid coils. And I'm going to stick them back in, lining up this four. Um, electrical connections there for the pressure sensor that would line up with these four holes here on the board and see what happens okay make sure it's all the way through and what I will do is I will push up each individual uh, one I'll solder, uh, I'll start soldering some of them first. I'll start with the pressure switch, um, as that's already pressed up into it, and there's a connection up here this end as well. We'll uh, do that as well. Put 
enough solder on them because it does soak in through the board down through the multi layer board. Okay. Make sure each uh, coil is uh, pushed through fully. Same process, make sure you let the solder flow down through the multi layer board because there's no way you can check that solder after. As you can see, this solder joint here doesn't have any pad on it on this side but I'm sure it goes through the board down to the next level of PCB okay. take your time with them Make sure they're all pu pushed through. Don't want any of those sunlight uh, coils crooked, otherwise uh, the uh, sunlight might jam as it's been energized. It could have been the last person that uh, resoldered these in, didn't let the solder get through the whole way through the board. But there's no way for me to visually see that. Um, and there's no way for me to measure without a schematic, because I wouldn't know which pin goes to where on those ICs. You'll see the solder soaking down. We do this one. Okay. Clean the flux off. If we're not too damaged, I need to print. We don't want to scrape through the print. I'm just helping to remove some of the stuff that's a little bit harder to remove with the brush. Okay. Okay, we've got four pads to go on. We'll leave that one to the last.
And now we're going to put this back into its housing. Uh, just check your pins, make sure they're all straight. Um, the gasket is okay. Plastic line and two. No, there's two plastic uh, protruding points that go into the case to hold these in place. Now, what we're going to do here is solder these connections. Uh, put something behind that. Uh, stop it rolling. And uh, we've got something. Yes, behind it. Okay. Likewise with these pins, you have to make sure that the solder actually gets through down to the multi layers so you have to give it a bit of time to get down there first of all I'm going to do these earth connections here four pins each side Okay, now we go about doing the electrical connectors. This is a temperature controlled solder line, so it maintains the so temperature of the tip at a constant uh, uh, temperature, depending on what you set it at. Uh, one of those cheap handheld ones wouldn't be good enough for this type of solder. Um, the temperature is too erratic and it tends to burn up PCBs and, con and connections. Just get a good solder line. Another way to make solder easier to undo is heat up um, the item you are working on. Bring it up to a couple of, say it on a radiator, but that brings it up by up to um, 30-40 degrees. Which means that's uh, less work on the iron, it doesn't have to heat uh, a small spot uh, longer reduce the risk of damaging the print. I normally, uh, when some items that are uh, very heavy, I would leave them sitting on a, I have a hot plate um, on an RE7500 that uh, heats it from below and it preheats the thing to about 60 degrees for me. And then I unsolder. Um, I bring the, I would bring it up to the temperature of the board up to about um, 120 degrees. And from that then, I would uh, do the uh, soldering process but with this I don't have to do that but um, if I was having difficulty removing the solder anywhere in this that's what I would do I would bring up the temperature of it and don't worry the plastic won't melt uh, at that, that uh, temperature okay I'm going to clean the flux off this
check to make sure there's no soil diffusion. Put in this, put in the final heat strip. I'm just going to test this item here. Um, 3.6 at home. I'm not too sure what it does. Uh, is it a switch that opens under pressure? I don't know. Here's our uh, pressure switch here. Um, it's a three pin item. And uh, let's see what else we can see on here. We do have unique codes on each one of these solenoids. I can see a little code on the end of it. 707T they're all different numbers so um, I made sure to make sure I, I do make sure to uh, put the right coil I don't let take them off and swap them around just in case they are different I don't have any data on that end of it I'm going to put this back on the hydraulic unit now and line up these two pin items with this and my pressure sensor with that and they should click together down okay that's it make sure they're all torqued down fully we don't want water getting into them moisture Okay, that's the uh, um, unit put back together again, and all that remains now is put in the car and see if that fault code go around, uh, come back or uh, has it cured the uh, problem with it. Uh, I won't be able to film that obviously because it's going back to the customer and they're never going to bring it back to me. Uh, I'm just getting paid to check it out, uh, uh, see if any poor saw the work. Um, I'm not getting paid for the actual repair of it. But it is interesting to see uh, what's involved in taking one of these apart. Uh, okay, I hope that's of some help out there to someone that wants to strip these down. Um, the skill level for this is very high. It's not going to be one of those uh, um, uh, jobs that uh, everybody could take on because uh, not everybody's got the tool to do that soldering work and that not everybody's got the soldering skills to do that very fine um unsoldering of um of uh, multi-layered boards uh, without damaging the boards uh, so I, if you don't have the skill i wouldn't advise uh, touching it um also it had to be tested in t uh, uh, intensively um, when it gets back in the car make sure there's no problems with it after that because at the end of the day it is an abs module we're talking about brakes and uh, I, I still wouldn't trust anything uh, that's repaired from ABS. I'd have to really, really test them and put through the uh, a full testing pro uh, process. Uh, make sure all those valves are open and closing. Number one, you can do that using your scan tool, open and close things. Um, check for leaks, uh, even though I've not went near the hydraulic uh, end of it uh, it would have to be checked for leaks anyway when the uh, mechanic puts this back in because as we the mechanic will put the brake pipes back into them uh, areas there those ports and um, he would uh, then he would then have to uh, bleed the unit uh, and then when the bleeding process is finished uh, 
he has to check for leaks so uh, I'm just going to put something over this stuff any dirt or uh, getting into these uh, I'm just going to put a piece of tape across these to stop any dust or dirt getting into the uh, the brake module itself Okay, hope that's some help out there. Uh, thanks for watching.